When you hear the phrase modern data, my guess is you first think about the tools, but tools by themselves aren't really the solution unless you have them within a bigger picture. And this is where I think the term modern data actually overcomplicates things because the actual strategy that most teams need is still very simple. And so in this video, I wanna give you some real examples of how you can pair these common modern tools with a simple stack framework to hopefully help clear up how you could go about building something for yourself or to help you feel prepared going to work on a variety of different stacks, but still understanding the general layout. Now, this is gonna be a video pulled from a bigger training course that I have that covers this idea. So you're gonna see us jump right in and talk about these different options that you have. In this lesson, I wanna give you some examples of common patterns that you'll see to implement this type of stack. And at a high level, there are three general approaches. Number one is cloud agnostic. And by this, it means the architecture is spread across multiple cloud tools and providers. Basically I'm saying you're not tied into one specific vendor for everything. As opposed to the second option, which is single cloud platform. So all infrastructure uses the same provider. And this is common when you have a place that only uses AWS or Amazon products or only uses Microsoft or Google. That's where you probably see the single cloud platform approach. Third is open source, meaning all of the main components use open source options as opposed to paid cloud versions of things. So there's a lot of nuance here and this is where a lot of questions come up. But what we're gonna do in this lesson is walk through step-by-step step a little bit more about how it looks for these specific patterns. All right, so I think this is a fun part for a lot of people because we start to put in place a lot of the tools that we hear about into the stack and basically play matchmaker. The first one we're gonna look at is that cloud agnostic approach, meaning it's multi-platform, you're not locked into a single vendor. So what does this look like? So let's go through each of those five components. And I wanna reiterate that these are just example tools. Don't get caught up too much on thinking one is better than the other. It's highly dependent on your skill set, your use case, and whatnot. So let's say, for example, on this platform, you choose Snowflake as your database server. Then for ingestion, Airbyte to load the data, DBT to transform it and move it from the raw to the analytics and all of this in between, GitHub to version control and automate the workflow, and then Tableau to report off of it. There you go, a simple stack, cloud agnostic, but you could mix and match this however you want. Maybe you wanna use GitLab down here instead of GitHub. Maybe you wanna use Fivetran. Maybe you wanna use Stitch and Power BI. These are actually real examples that I've used. So hopefully that's helpful and shows you what that looks like. Oh, and here's another one. So we have BigQuery and Tableau and Airbyte. You can do whatever you want here. So in this video, as you can see, we're talking a lot about the design of an architecture, but the design phase is just one component of a much larger process of building a well-structured data architecture. If you're somebody who's leading a team, or if you're looking to contribute at a higher level and be an engineer, it's sometimes hard to know what are the key things you need to know about. So to help you with that, I've put together a free modern data checklist. It'll be a link down below. It covers not only this concept, but the other ones you need to understand to help you better implement or contribute to modern data architectures like this. So again, completely free. If you're interested, there'll be links below. But with that said, let's get back to the video. All right, now we're going to move on to the single cloud platform and we're going to go through each of them one at a time. And we'll start with Azure. You can again, see how you can apply the same framework across all these different options. All right, so Microsoft, let's say Synapse is their cloud database provider. Then you can use Data Factory to extract and load your data. You could again use Data Factory to do transformation and apply logic to move and create this workflow. Then Azure DevOps is the Git provider on Azure and Power BI would be the reporting tool on top of all this. You could also switch this out and use DBT and GitHub as well and still use most of the Azure stack if you wanted some of the features of that as well. And the other thing I'll mention here is with Microsoft at least, they have a new platform called Fabric, which is a combination of a lot of these things bundled together. Now I haven't personally used it, so I can't really speak too much on exactly how all of this works in practice, but the idea is that it brings these primary components under one hood so that you can work with them together because as we're showing here, they're the main components. So by bringing them together, they know that most people will need these and it will hopefully simplify their lives. Again, I can't speak too much on exactly how that works and how it looks, but I know that is the goal of Fabric and it's something they're really working on. All right, now let's look at AWS. So Amazon. You could have Amazon Redshift as a database server. You could use AWS Glue as a platform to extract and load and ingest that data. Same thing as Data Factory, but here with Glue, you could use that again for your transformation. You could use their internal Git service. I believe it's called Code Commit for Git tracking and all that stuff. And then QuickSight for their visualization. All this under AWS, or you switch some of these things out. A lot of times I see people doing this. That's why I keep pointing it out. All right, so now let's go to number three of these big cloud providers, which is Google GCP. The 
database would be BigQuery. They have their own tool for data ingestion and transformation. They have their own version control platform. They have Looker for reporting and all of this works together again, or you swap out some of the components and keep most of the architecture on the cloud platform while some of it is I'm um, using these other tools. Now let's talk about the open source option, which is also going to be the playground stack that we build. And again, this is just an example. There are other tools you could use, but um, this is also, again, what we're gonna build. So the database we're gonna use is Postgres. Again, because it's gonna be easy for all of us to build together and keep on the same page. And if you notice here, this diagram looks a little bit different. We got rid of that separate database because with Postgres out of the box, you're not able to easily query across databases without doing some stuff. So we just keep it together. For ingestion, we'll use Airbyte because Airbyte provides an open source self-hosted option that we can do ourselves and not have to uh, sign up for anything new. So that is going to load it into these raw tables. Next is transformation with DBT. Again, open source, version control, Technically, this is a cloud platform, but it's free to use, so we don't have to pay anything extra to use GitHub, and it's the best one to use, I think, for this example. And plus, we're gonna use GitHub for other purposes. And then for reporting, in this case, we'll use Metabase. Again, open source and with the option to self-host. And hopefully, all these examples have further clarified exactly how this stack looks and how you can mix and match different tools to get the outcome you want, all while staying within the same framework of the simple stack.